Hi guys, we've got a book to show you today. This is very kindly sent over by iDesign. I don't know how you say the company name, but thanks for sending it over. This book is something that I was completely unaware of until Alex from Nintendo Arcade, my good friend, put up a post about this. And I was super excited because both Alex and I absolutely love this home computer. It means so much to me because it was really my first love in gaming and uh, I know Alex is a huge fan as well. Now, we're talking about the BBC Micro and the book in question is Acorn, A World in Pixels. So this covers the BBC Micro and the Acorn Electron, but BBC was really where I grew up in the 80s playing video games and I absolutely love it. Now, anyone who grew up in the 80s or even early 90s probably seen or used the BBC Micro because they were in schools everywhere, but my best mate down the road had one at home and I can't tell you the amount of days we just spent playing the classics. So I'm hoping that this book is going to contain a lot of great memories for me. So anyway, let's have a look inside Acorn A World in Pixels. The first thing to comment on is the great quality of this book. It's really heavy with a really well made thick and solid outer sleeve. Love the cover design incorporating some classic Acorn game characters. Firstly, we have a contents page and foreword by Superior Software Managing Director Richard Hansen. The first section is a bit on some of the major publishers like Acornsoft, Micropower, Superior Software, Alligator and so on. The main meat of the book is of course the games, but there's also a great deal of developer interviews in here which are just fantastic. I'll be skimming through this as I don't really want to show too much of the book and spoil it for anyone. The BBC Micro had a lot of shameless arcade clones like Snapper which you can immediately see is a Pac-Man ripoff. Granny's Garden is one of the many text adventures to grace Acorn's computers and one that most people think of when they think of the BBC Micro. Starship Command here, which I know is one of Alex's favourites. You can see a ship modelled after the Liberator from Blake 7 there, which is one of my favourite sci-fi programmes. Another blatant clone here, Killer Gorilla, a Donkey Kong clone that I loved as a kid. The Making of Elite, definitely one of the BBC's most iconic and influential games. There are a few of these making of features in the book and they are absolutely superb. Revs is an interesting Formula 3 game made by Jeff Crammond who went on to make the Grand Prix series. There's also a nice image of the Revs box art and an interview with Jeff. Daredevil Dennis, one of my favourite BBC Micro games where you control a stuntman on various vehicles. Brilliant fun and very challenging, still really fun to play. Frack, a platform game with very impressive graphics for the time at least. Another making of article, The Making of Repton, which is fascinating, made by then 16 year old Tim Tyler, back in the days when games were quite literally made by bedroom coders. Citadel, another childhood favourite of mine. And Imogen, probably my favourite BBC micro game. There's a comment here from someone saying how this game is like the quintessential acorn game to them and I agree. You play as a wizard who can transmogrify into a cat and a chimp to solve puzzles and it was just hugely innovative at the time. Wonderful double page spread of the cover art for Palace of Magic here, what a game. Back when gameplay was everything because the graphical capabilities were so primitive. Strikers Run I have very fond memories of. We'd even play this one at school on our lunch break.
Arkanoid, another arcade conversion I'd put very high on my favourites list. Absolutely superb conversion. Codename Droid, the sequel to Strikers Run. A very different game, but still great fun. Oh, The Making of Exile, another hugely innovative game. This just blew me away as a kid, just the sheer scale and the realistic physics and the digitized speech, just wow. This section pays tribute to the artists and composers of Acorn Games with little bios for each. And there are even sections on the old Acorn magazines and unreleased games. So I really whizzed through there, but this book is even better than I was expecting. So much nostalgia for me, but also lots of new info. The making of articles and the developer interviews are definitely a highlight that take this to the next level. That's Acorn, a world in pixels, an absolute must for any Electron or BBC Micro fan. There we go guys, that was Acorn of World in Pixels. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick up a copy for yourself. Thanks again to the guys for sending it over and thank you again to Alex for giving me the heads up on this and there is a link to Alex's channel as well down in the description. Cheers. <laughs>